Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1 this time. And in this video I will introduce a system for deploying a satellite constellation, a ComSat constellation that I cooked up. Really meant for my Mars colonization series because I wanted to send them over to Mars as a little constellation. And this is also handy for setting up a constellation around the moon. And it is on my Sagita system. You can see a single stick Sagita rocket. And it is a custom part that I've um, been meaning to put together for quite a while now. And I'm sure I'm not the only person to have thought up this way of doing it. But anyway, let's get it launched. Ignition. And launch. Uh, there's a little bit more of a gap than usual right there. Hmm. That's a little bit weird. It wasn't like that before. I don't know why it's a little bit more gappy, but that gives you a hint as to what's going on here, though. So basically, I've always been sick of stacking the satellites on top of each other inside the ferry. You know how that goes if you're trying to launch, like, a bunch of them at once. And Universal uh, Storage, the mod, uh, sort of gave me the idea of arraying them sort of in tandem. Well, I don't know if in tandem is the right way of putting it. You'll see. For this particular run, we'll go for geosynchronous orbit or geostationary orbit. And, uh, at least demonstrate that the satellites can get there properly. It's taken me a lot of time to troubleshoot various issues with this. It's a little bit quirky. I will put the link in the video description, but it is a bit quirky. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay. And we can enable crossfeed as well. Double check the ISP for this. Okay, good. And you will note we are not dumping any fairings. That's not how this works. I'm still a little bit confused about that gap, but anyway. The satellites are here, by the way. There is a heat shield, that's for Mars, that's why it only has 10% of its blader. We're not doing the Mars thing here, we'll do that in the Mars colonization series, of course. Okay, we have made orbit, 180 by 158, a good preparation for geosynchronous transfer orbit. We've still got 1,500 meters per second in this stage. The delta V reading down there for... Okay, well, let's show you this part. Um, so, this is the transfer stage. It is hydrogen and oxygen right now because that was what fit most elegantly in that shape, basically because hydrogen has a big tank and then oxygen has a smaller tank. It just works out that way. So we're using a BE-7, that's the engine on the Blue Origin uh, Blue Moon, the lander. And so I decided to use that. And of course we've got full MLI layers, otherwise it wouldn't survive, you know, it wouldn't be able to keep the fuel for a trip to Mars. Though I don't anticipate, you know, uh, keeping most of the fuel anyway on the trip to Mars. Uh, it's got MMH and N204 for the RCS thrusters. You can uh, see rather small RCS thrusters there. They're 50 newtons only. And then they're identical to the thrusters on the satellites themselves. Uh, so that's the idea. Uh, now, the solar panels do not rotate at this point. I might come up with an advanced version that does, but I'm not sure about that. That's probably, I don't know how much Kerbal Space Program is gonna like that idea. But um, the solar panels do work otherwise. So that's at least a thing. And the concept is that, well, we have a heat shield down here, and then these panels are gonna be heat, partly heat shielded. They're not gonna be ablatively heat shielded. They're just gonna have a high heat tolerance, which would be normally the case for a fairing. Otherwise, uh, SpaceX would have a heck of a time trying to recover them, as they do. Uh, so yeah, the fairings, they're heavy though. That's the downside of doing this, is that uh, we're carrying these all the way up. Um, they're not that heavy, because they're not really big compared to the regular fairings I launch on the Sagita. They're actually pretty small. 
but still, they are extra mass. Anyway, we're going to plot for geosynchronous. But yeah, uh, right now it's uh, pretending that we've got 5,400 meters per second. I don't even know how it gets that because this engine is obviously backwards, right? It's So it's just totally lying about that. Okay, so that stage is done. Separation. Now, for reasons I don't quite understand but are probably related to the Delta V reading down there, this doesn't really like gimbling at all. It seems to want to flip it around. It gets confused. I don't know why. So I'm going to go retrograde with it. Of course, the issue is that the controller of this is now backwards, you know, based on the engine. So I'll re I'll consider whether I want to like make it control from the opposite direction. But for now, uh, we have to point retrograde in order to have it burn. I know I just made a hash of that explanation, but you understand what I mean. This is a much more leisurely burn, of course. I think it's a 10 minute burn with this 40 kilonewton, no, uh, eight minutes, I'll believe that. I, I think the burn time is correct there. Eight minutes and 40 seconds with this. And that's almost there. That's just about right. Okay. Out we go to Apoapsis. You can see it recharging now, and that means we had better be... Well, it's sort of oblique the way it's facing the sun, though. But I guess it's getting enough sunlight. It should get enough for Mars as well. Those are big panels, and it's not got much by way of power requirements. So it could probably go even further out. It looks like this has enough 2,357 to finish it off. But uh, it wouldn't have without the help from the upper stage of the Sagitta rocket. We would have needed the Delta V from the satellites to do the rest of it. So I've called this the OMSAT system, O-M-S-A-T. And uh, that's how if you type in that into your... Uh, search field, and that's how you'll find the parts. Thought about Omnisat system, but this was easier. You can put whatever engine you want on this, and uh, the tanks here are filled only with MMH and N204. They only have the MMH and N204 built in, so you can fill it with whatever fuel. So if you want to use a hypergolic engine, you can. That is, or kerosene and oxygen or whatever. Plenty of engines should fit inside the fairing. I don't know why the shading is quite like this, but... It's not because of edge split or anything like that. It's just how it is. I think it has something to do with Textures Unlimited, which I have applied to this. This may look different if you don't have Textures Unlimited. They're relatively light sats, of course. They're nothing but a solar panel, a comm dish, and a controller, more or less. Okay, well, that's good enough for now. Let's see about separation. So, what we have here are, there are decouplers, and then the satellites. I'll have to show you how to put it together in the VAB, I think. So, there are four decouplers and four satellites. So let me activate one of the decouplers. Well, the thing is, the satellites are so close in that you have to switch to it. Activate its thruster, or, okay, fine. Right click this, activate engine. Don't know why I didn't do with staging, but okay. And then give it a little puff, and then it'll come out. So RCS enabled, oops, enabled. And so that's a little satellite. And let me give another puff. You can see it's a little engine. The engine is a separate part because for reasons I don't quite understand, uh, Kerbal Space Program does not like it when you have the engine and the solar panels as the same part. Go figure. Extend solar panel. Or it might be a mod that's weird about it. So it extends the panels and uh, the antennae. Um, on reflection, 
Now, you know, if it's a co- Earthcom set, this isn't the. Well, no, nah, it should be all right. I don't know. As far as getting the sunlight, I mean. Anyway, uh, a small amount of MHN 204. You can see 536 kilograms, which is reasonable for a satellite, I think. And uh, prograde, you can see the little thrusters. The thrusters are back here. There are eight of them oriented so they don't blast. No, they try their best not to blast anything. And then the little thruster, the main engine, if you will, is a 440 Newton deal. 312 seconds ISP, and it's got that little gap there in the back plate. And then there's the control module. It's got a collider too. And yeah, that's our little satellite. And we're way past, well, not, uh, yeah, we're past uh, the orbital period. Now there's no reaction wheel, it's all thrusters, and you gotta use the engine for the forward and backward bit. Fortunately, infinite ignitions. Okay, well, that's 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds, so we'll put it right there. Okay, switch back. So, I'm just going to deploy the rest. And I want to see if we have enough fuel left over for, uh, for deorbiting this. We don't have a um, parachute, which would have been nice, actually. Also, not sure why the decouplers don't actually just pop it out. But, uh, yep. That's one of those little quirks. So, now we've got all these clear. And they've got 1,543 meters per second on their own. Their dry mass is 324 kilograms. And the rest is fuel. It seemed reasonable. And let's get back to the stage. Obviously, you wouldn't deploy them all at once like this. But, uh, yeah, now it looks like it only has 1,023 meters per second. And I don't think that's actually enough to get it back into the atmosphere, unfortunately. But, so there's a... a th this whole transfer stage is one part, and except for the engine, which you'll have to figure out which engine you want to use yourself. And then there's a central pillar and then the four decouplers. And that's because I didn't want, uh, I don't think you can put four decouplers on the same part. So there's uh, four separate decoupler parts, which are these little brackets that the satellites fit into, and which is why they can't clear it very easily. And then there's just a heat shield at the bottom. Okay. Well, to the VAB, and I'll show you how to put it together. So, OMSAT. O-M-S-A-T and then for some reason that brings up these other engines from SSTU I don't know why but all of these are named OMSAT in the title there's five parts and the first one is the transfer stage at the top that's that guy and then there's the central pillar the stacker you can launch eight at the same time if you want you just need another one of these you could launch 12 if you want there's just add another one of these so I mean however many you want and uh, of course even numbers are probably for the best so that's the decoupler right and we'll have to rotate it and make sure it gets on the right way uh, not like that in other words you don't want to put it on the wrong node ah but it'll be pretty obvious if it is like that okay somehow got it right four decouplers make sure you have them and then uh, the satellite is initially oriented like this otherwise it wouldn't you know control from the right direction and these go here but there's a catch remember the engine is separate so once you've put one on grab the omsat engine there's just a 440 newton thruster and i think i have to flip it around uh or maybe not okay 
and just holding down alt will probably get it in the right place there it is because there isn't any other node around there that'd be facing the right direction and then copy and paste copy and paste and that's the top module for us yeah I'm not too sure why I had a gap during launch you can see it's flush in here curious and I actually had to make a new stage for the Sagita rocket for it with a flat top so if you don't have a flat top stage you might have a little bit of a problem there but uh, you can see a flat top without the um, fairing mount for this and of course I snuck the heat shield right there but you don't need that if you're just going to earth orbit all right so that's the idea I hope you like it and if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time